about the state of our community and something that Dr. King said so eloquently. He said that there can ultimately be no peace without justice. And of course, he was right. He said peace is not merely the absence of some negative force, war, tensions, confusion, but it is the presence of some positive force, justice, goodwill, the power of the kingdom of God. And of course, that philosophy was best represented for me in his letter from the Birmingham jail where he called out the white moderate ministers who just wanted peace, didn't want to agitate in Birmingham, thought it would be too much trouble. And Dr. King sort of said, no, without, without a good fight, good trouble, as John Lewis called it, nonviolent trouble, then we could not make progress. I hold that principle dear in my heart as I look at all the injustices that we face in our community. But I wonder if Dr. King were still alive today and looked at the state of the world in our community. This week, of course, we've been talking a lot about the division between the Jewish American community and the Muslim American community over the war in the Middle East. We see divisions everywhere. I wonder if Dr. King would teach us that the corollary is also true. That without peace, we can't ultimately find justice. That if we don't talk to one another, no matter how deeply held our differences might be, if we don't stand in the shoes of, of somebody else of goodwill, who may have a different point of view or a different history or a different source of pain, that we don't try to build coalitions that actually allow us to achieve justice and equity. That maybe achieving justice can't be realized. I'm, we cannot change the war in the Middle East, for example. But we can model behavior on our college campuses, and I'm so glad that we have great education leaders here today, Chancellor May, President Cardoza, and of course, President Wood and others. And in our community, we must model the behavior that we want to see in others and around the world. And so I call on all of us here in my last Martin Luther King dinner speech as mayor to remember that this dinner started in part because Sacramento has always been a courageous city and a courageous region. We have always stood with and for each other in times of trouble. When the NAACP is firebombed, we stand together. When the synagogues are firearms, we stand together. When Muslim Americans are the victims of discrimination after 9-11. When Sikh Americans are victims of discrimination, we stand together. And we're not standing together as much as we need to in 2024. <laughs> so let this dinner be a reminder not only of remembering Dr. King's teaching that without justice there can be no peace, but if we don't work together, people of goodwill, help each other, see each other for who we are at our own trauma and our own pain and reach across the divide, then we might not have justice nor peace. And I don't want that from Sacramento. I don't want that from this country. None of us do. That's why we're here tonight. Let's go forward together in that spirit. Thank you very much.